to an episode of The Stampede, where I take your gaming questions and I lather it a nice, juicy, full cake, and I shove my face into it until you understand my opinion and the opinion of a couple other Let's Players as well. I'm your host, Buffalo Prime, and as always, we are brought to you by The Hive, with gaming reviews, gaming news, the Buzz Gaming Talk Show, Let's Plays, and so much more. We really are your one-stop destination for all things gaming on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe today and check us out at Hive Guys. So today, a Let's Player named An Assassin Turtle asks us, what game would you live in as a non-playable character or as an NPC? There's always an, an Assassin's Turtle uh, details in the description section below. What game would you live in as an NPC? You, you only can pick one. That's a challenging question, in my opinion. You can only pick one game. That's, you know, the game you're going to be in for the rest of your gaming and, I guess, life. That would be your life in whatever game you selected. So in the Stampede, we make sure to bring on Let's Players to discuss those very same questions. And today I got to interview Xenomites, a Let's Player who's done a plethora of very interesting videos. He does the rap battle where he's in this like weird turn-based retro, almost Tron-styled game where it's like moving at the time of the beat. And he does this rap battle and he, you know, he totally rips off Natalie Portman's uh, rap from Lonely Island, which is which is fine because it's done really badly, but it's super funny anyway. Um, so that's definitely a video he just uploaded, very recent. We also got uh, retro internet uh, reviews that he does, where he takes an old website and reviews it. He's got Team Fortress 2 gameplay, he's got Gary's Mod gameplay, and he does this thing where he takes like free or the cheapest Steam games and he does a video on them. So definitely really cool, definitely want to check him out. His details still in the description section below. But let's turn it over to that interview that I had with Xenomite. Let's, uh, let's bring him on here. Xenomite, how you doing today? Oh, I'm breathing, so... Not awful. That is a good start. Uh, now, Zeno, uh, go ahead and give our audience kind of like a, a, a look into your channel and, and what you're all about. Well, I'm a self-proclaimed shitty YouTuber and an actual shitty YouTuber. Uh, I mostly make videos about things that interest me. I do a lot of heavy editing because I don't, I, can't, I don't personally have the patience or the time to sit through other people's videos where it's very long-winded. I don't, I don't have a lot of patience, essentially. I can't sit still for very long. So I, I tend to make a lot of shorter, funnier videos. That are, I guess, a little more intense than most other things you find on the internet. And I think I've noticed that, too. A lot of your videos span from anywhere from, a, you know, a couple of seconds, maybe 45, 50 seconds, to I think the highest I'm seeing right now, it's about five and a half minutes. So, yeah, well, that's, that's about the range of my most recent content. And that's interesting because, you know, a lot of YouTubers and a lot of Let's Players specifically have long videos. You know, we have, we've seen videos that have been up to an, almost an hour in length. And the Hive themselves, we, uh, we've done videos anywhere from... 10 minutes to 30 minutes so uh, definitely having a shorter to, you know window of video is is definitely you know, something very interesting that you do um, so what got you into the whole let's play scene um video games actually my older brother like whenever he was a little kid or well, when i was a little kid my older brother um introduced me to video games first game I ever played was like doom and he it was more him playing than me obviously i was terrible as a little kid but i had a great time and then, like, as time went on, we played games together. We played Baldur's Gate together. Again, to, granted, bleh. it was mostly him, not so much me. He'd read me all the texts and stuff. He'd help me choose what to do. But it was a great time, and that really just kind of hooked me on gaming. And I've been playing video games ever since. Like, my most favorite game in the last maybe 10 years has been, like, Team Fortress 2. But I've really liked, like, Hotline Miami, Killing Floor, Nuclear Throne. I played a ton of The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Not so much the first one. Oh, wow, yeah, and, and, and Binding of Isaac Rebirth definitely has a huge following, too. And a lot of those games are games that, you know, I think a lot of people look at Let's Plays and, and try to, like, watch people play those games because they might not have an interest in them, um, but seeing other people playing it is definitely entertaining as well. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump right into our topic. We got we got Xenomite here to uh, kind of go through this, this interesting question that was posed to us. Uh, what game would you want to be... I want to live in as an NPC and why. So I'm going to pose that question to you, Zeno. My, what's, what's your answer to that? Um, that's actually kind of a hard question. Like, I gave it some thought, and my two initial thoughts were, I, A, want to live through the game, because in a lot of games, like, <laughs> NPCs end up slaughtered brutally, and B, I want to make them feel something, whether it's humor, or sadness, whatever. Now, the two things that came to mind were maybe as a Hotline Miami, maybe as one of, like, the aspects of the main character's... Um, there's a trio of three NPCs, if you've never played Hotline Miami, that sort of represent the main character's psyche. And I would like to be one of those, because some of the lines there are a little weak, although some of them hit incredibly hard, especially the line that says, do you actually enjoy hurting people? That line is an amazing line. I want more lines like that in the game. And then uh, I thought about Killing Floors, the traitor, the traitor chick. 
um, because a she lives and b she's really funny. <laughs> so you're you're kind of tossing up between the idea of being funny in the game and the idea of adding you know quality context and you know meaningful context. So if you had to pick yeah. one of those, what would it be? Oh, well, the psyche characters in Hotline Miami don't really survive, so I'm gonna have to go with Killing Floor. All right, there you go. <laughs> I want to live. <laughs> <laughs> so as the NPC in Killing Floor, let's say if you were your own NPC somehow. Um, what would you be the most dangerous part of your life in, in Killing Floor? In uh, Killing Floor, the first one and the second one, although more so in the first one, there's like these huge swarms of zombie-esque creatures that attempt to kill you, mutilate you, etc., etc., etc. And she's really the only character, aside from like the final boss of the game, that's there the entire time. Like, she is always alive, somehow managing to dodge the crowds, constantly selling you weapons, ammo and stuff, poking jokes, doing that kind of stuff. I feel like the most dangerous part of your life would actually be surviving in that world. And she seems to be doing it single-handedly. And obviously, as an NPC, if you were to take that, you would obviously try to do that as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now, let's, uh, let's go ahead and turn gears here. You know, the whole Final Fantasy and the Pokemons of the world and these giant RPGs where there's a bunch of NPCs that only have one line that they contribute to the game. It's just that one statement, whatever that is. That's, like, that's the extent of their life, you know, no matter... You know, no matter if you've been playing the game for hours or only minutes, you know, their life boils down to that one statement they give the main character, if the main character even approaches them. So if you were in a game like that, as an NPC, let's say, you know, in Hotline, let's say in Killing Floor, or even if we throw you in like a Pokemon, we, we throw you in, you know, a Tales of Symphonia, whatever the case may be, if you only had one line that you could contribute to the game, one line that the viewers would and the gamers would read, what would that line be? That's, that's a really hard question. Whenever I think about that question, I actually come back to one of my other favorite games, Final Fantasy VI. I've not played a lot of Final Fantasy. I don't like a lot of Final Fantasy. But I played Final Fantasy VI as a kid, and I loved that game. And the one thing that really stuck out to me in that was this one NPC that you don't really have a lot of lines with. He's, he has maybe six, seven lines, and they're really well written. He's Sid. And later on in the game, um, like the world ends. Legitimately, it's apocalypse. 90% of the population's dead. As far as you know, there's only two survivors left, Sid and one of the main characters from the game. Sid already has more development and depth than most of the other characters in the game. Well, no, not most. Than some of the other, like, um, actual main characters in the game, just from the few lines he's had. And Sid just ups and dies, and it's tragic and heartbreaking. And then the other main character that's still on the island actually tries to commit suicide. I would like to have an impact like that. I don't know what my line would be, but I know it needs to be impactful and strong, and something that would actually leave an impact on the character. Suicide isn't, like, a light topic, especially with um, the recent happenings in Let's Play concerning Markiplier and his friends. It's not, it's not a light topic, and if dealt with right, like this situation, is very impactful. I can agree to that, too, and I think there are areas of gaming that um, can impact the gamer and bring them into a world that they understand that they have emotion for. And, and thus, I think some of the best video games out there are games that you, you really just get lost in. And I think uh, a line like that or a situation like that would definitely do that. Well, Xenomite, I won't take any more of your time. Thanks so much for being on the Stampede. And, uh, you know, we uh, any last words for uh, our viewers at home? I'll catch you later. Have a nice night, and please enjoy. Awesome. And uh, for those of you that tuned in xenomite's information is in the description section below interesting concept that xenomite brought to us kind of going along the path that his npc character would be kind of a plot point for whatever game he's in he wants to make a meaningful impact which definitely has room in the gaming industry for games that really do suck you into their world the dragon ages the mass effects the skyrims the the games with driving plots like until dawn look at that creepy face behind me destiny's got some good plot points somewhat i take that with a grain of salt but like a kingdom hearts you know these games that npcs have a giant impact on how you feel about the game and how involved you are in the game so he definitely took kind of a serious note uh for me personally in my turn to answer this question i would pick kind of a lighter game and my decision after much deliberation is pokemon why not why not be in pokemon you know what i would be in pokemon i'd be an elite four member and i know what you're thinking buffalo prime why on earth would you want to be an elite four member because every time you go to the Elite Four, no matter how prepared you are, you're a little bit nervous. You're like, dang, oh, I'm going to beat all these guys in a row. I'm going to make sure my items are good. Hopefully I got the matchups right. I would be like the first Elite Four member you fought, and like I wouldn't have like any evolved Pokemon. 
be like level nine Caterpie. That's actually kind of scary because for some reason he knows like solar beam. Goo! Like I would have just Pokemon that don't make sense and my lines would be ridiculous. I'd say stuff like, why evolve your Pokemon when they can stay cute forever? But like that's that's kind of like a line that's already in the game, but maybe I'd be like, I don't know, I fart in my sleep. Go Caterpie! Like something stupid like that. I think I'd I could add a lot of humor to Pokemon, which is a pretty straightforward game. That would be the game I think I'd spend the rest of my life in. The downside to that is I'd be standing in a room just like When's the main character getting here? Like, that would be me. So, uh, what do you want to know your answers to this question? What game would you want to be an NPC in and why? What are some of the uh, additional things that you would provide that game? Leave a comment in the comment section below, and we'd love to hear your feedback. And as always, if you like what we're putting out, you know, make sure to interact with us. We're pretty open-ended with interactions of that nature. Thanks for checking in to an episode of The Stampede. If you've got a question for us or you want to be on the show, leave a comment. Let me know because I want to reach out to you and I want to add you. So I'm Buffalo Prime, and we're signing out.